So it appears that all of the information that we've been wanting as far as what NVIDIA plans to do for moving forward besides the GPP and all of that nonsense is coming out at GDC. Except for this news actually came out at CES in 2017. Yes, that's right. At the Consumer Electronics Show in 2017, companies like Asus and Acer unveiled their 4K 120 Hertz Plus G-Sync panels. This is the ROG Swift PG27UQ. And it would be a lot easier for me to come up with a list of crazy amazing features that it doesn't have. So 4K resolution, 3840 by 2160. HDR, G-Sync, it runs at 144 hertz. This 27 inch panel not only has a 4K resolution, but it also runs at an ultra fast 144 hertz refresh rate and it requires a single DisplayPort 1.4 input. Now, if that wasn't amazing enough, this panel also has a peak brightness of 1000 nits a full array backlit with 384 individually controllable LED zones, almost zero input latency, quantum dot technology, and a wide color gamut for colors close to DCI-P3 cinema standard. So basically, you can have your cake and eat it too. G-Sync HDR will be launching later this year. Here at the NVIDIA booth at CES 2017, and we are looking at probably one of the most exciting things we're going to see at the show. This is a 4K HDR panel um, that was announced actually last night by ASUS. We have coverage on the site of it already, uh, but this is the first time we've got to see it in person. It is a 144 hertz display as well, IPS technology. But Q2 2017 is the release. So it's obvious that they had to delay there's been an entire another ces that has come and where we i mean we're freaking in march of 2018 obviously they haven't come out but now now according to sources at both pc world as well as anon tech at gdc nvidia has stated that it is confident that the g-sync hdr compatible displays will hit the market this coming april which is pretty fantastic both the acer predator x27 and the asus rog strife PG27UQ are implementations of NVIDIA's reference design for, for G-Sync HDR displays. So they're going to have a 3840 by 2160, which is UHD resolution, a 144 hertz refresh rate, 1000 nits brightness, direct LED backlighting system with 384 zones, and HDR10 support. Those are freaking fantastic specs. That is there's absolutely amazing. So that was specifically from a non-tech. So that's just that's just mind-boggling. 4K, 144 hertz refresh rate, HDR, G-Sync. That is completely bananas. But the thing that is confusing me, as well as confusing a lot of other people, is actually we don't have the graphic horsepower necessarily necessary in order to actually make those monitors run the way that they're supposed to. Like if you take a 1080 Ti, it's barely going to get you 4K 60 FPS. And for everybody who's gonna say, well, this this is meant for people who wanna play those damn esports games at uh, 144 hertz, which you know, the Dota 2s and the Sears goes. To that, I would say most, most professional gamers that I know aren't using HDR, they aren't using the higher resolutions, they're trying to lower the resolutions, they want more than 144 hertz. This is apparently being marketed towards gamers that want the in-depth gaming experience. I think the perfect game that would exemplify what this is going for, besides probably the HDR support, is The Witcher 3, a massive open world game where there's just tons of depth and tons of NVIDIA implementation of the game into it with hair works and such and then you have this nvidia monitor to go alongside of it with that's at 4k resolution runs at a blisteringly fast 144 hertz and then also has hdr support as well this is a professional level gaming monitor this is not meant for esports people and this is not meant for the casuals this is meant for the die hard we want the best of the best graphics so my thought in my understanding with all of this is that I don't think this could be marketed in the current climate. So even if you had two 1080 Ti's at 100% scaling when they're in SLI, you're barely going to be pushing, let's say 115, 120 FPS at best 
at like medium to high settings, not even ultra settings on the best games that are out there. You slap on Witcher 3, you put on Hairworks, you try to run that at 4K with at 144 hertz, it's just not gonna happen, which makes me concerned that these monitors are being marketed to people who don't have systems that can properly run them. But the idea that that really is um, jogging my follicles right now is the fact that these are NVIDIA officially backed displays. This isn't, this isn't Asus announcing their own brand. This isn't Acer announcing their own brand, but this is officially what NVIDIA is going to be supporting along with the BFGD, the big freaking gaming displays that they announced at CES of this year, which were 4K, 65 inch, 120 hertz. That's right, kicking off CES 2018 in a big way, NVIDIA has announced their plans to release a 65 inch 4K HDR monitor, which they're calling the BFGD. Well, those letters should have stood for big freaking gaming display because that would be awesome. NVIDIA is actually going with big format gaming display. On top of all that, the display will also feature low latency support, one millisecond response time, a 120 hertz refresh rate, full G-Sync support, and an HDR with brightness rated at 1000 nit. Like, nothing can run those. Nothing on the market right now, even the best of the best, a Titan V, wouldn't be able to properly run a 4K 120 hertz panel for the games that we want to play. And so I'm considering, and the thing that I want to have a discussion with everybody about is, do you think that this means that we probably might be getting some new graphics cards over the horizon? Do you think that this might actually be a significant bump up for what's coming out in the future? Because that type of display just would be so buttery, eye-wateringly, dolphin-swimmingly amazing in my eyeballs and something that I would want to have. But even with the two 1080 Ti's that I have lying around in my office, and by lying around, I mean I put them to good use. There's the Zotac one in my system. There's the Galax one that I use for my live streams. But even if I put those together on my Threadripper system, like, I can barely play games at 3440 by 1440 at 100 hertz, like, let alone adding that up to 4K, let alone smashing that up to 144 hertz. But then the fact that it's not just the high resolution, the high refresh rate, and then there's G-Sync, that makes it a great gaming display, but then they go ahead and not just put HDR on these displays, no, it's the highest standard of HDR with the 1000 nits brightness, which means that NVIDIA is legitimately marketing this as a significant upgrade in gaming display, something that we should have had a year and a half ago when it was announced at CES, but now we have to, we had to wait for it to be announced here. But I want to know what you guys are thinking on this. Would you even buy one? Like, does this advance in gaming displays get your jimmies all rustled and get your motor all running and gives you the, you know, the dragonfly wings all fluttering? Like, that's, is this something that would excite you or is this like so high-end tech that you just are kind of going to wait until it trickles down until the consumer level where basically HDR becomes a standard on a 1080p display? Are you satisfied with your 1080p displays? Do you want more? Like, honestly, like... No, honestly, I do notice a difference when I go from 1080p to 4K, even on any resolution, like any size screen. It's, it's a massive difference. But then also, like, as far as, like, 100 to 144 hertz, I don't notice that. 60 to 144 hertz, I don't notice that. Anyways, I want to have a discussion with everybody about this. This is something that NVIDIA is planning to launch in April with these massive, massive, insanely impressive displays. I think that alongside all of the other rumors that we are going to get, that this means that the 2080 or the 1180, whatever our architecture it's based on is probably going to see a significant bump in performance especially considering the fact that you know it's been nearly two years it'll be two years since pascal launched by the time we get these new cards and to only have you know a 15 percent increase would be remarkably terrible especially given the amount of time that we've had to wait for the nvidia to not only release new cards, but then they screw everybody over by selling directly to miners, and then not only that, but then also enforce the GPP and then start changing everything. Like, I just... Oh man, NVIDIA, you, your, your technology is so great, but your business practices make me want to strangle an avocado. Like, I just, I can't even sometimes NVIDIA, and so... I really want to know what you guys are thinking. Let me know either down in the comments what, what you think of this display, something you want, something you don't, or over on our Discord, which I happen to be pretty fairly active over. I want to have you guys join the community Discord, top link in the video description. If you are buying monitors and you want to help us out here at the UFD Tech channel, you can use our Amazon affiliate code. That'll be the link in the video description. If you happen to pick up one of these 4K 144 hertz monitors that might be coming out. Uh, 
But anyways, I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers. Like freaking 4K is enough. But then to add the 144 hertz, refer like, it's, ah.